Okay, so um, first off, I know that um, this is going to be undefined when x is equal to 0. So that's my first spot. And then I also want to see, um, I want to solve 1 minus natural log of x. Where does that equal to 0? So then um, if I move the ln of x over to the right side, I would get 1 equals to natural log of x. And uh, using the uh, definition of the logarithm, let's just make sure that we remember this. Log base e of x. So um, this guy, if I turn it into uh, exponential notation, this would be e raised to the 1. So e raised to the 1 is equal to x. So x is simply equal to e. Um, and so those are the two spots where uh, this guy is undefined. Now notice that um, it doesn't have any zeros because if you multiply both sides by the denominator, you would get negative 1 equals to 0, which has no solution. So that, that's it. Okay, so the very first thing I want to do is uh, to simplify all this stuff because to find the zeros, um, I can tell already that this guy needs a lot of simplifying. So um, notice that here I've got 0 times this. So this whole thing is going to equal to 0. Now these two minus negative 1, this is just positive 1. <clears throat> and then here this is 1 times all of this stuff so I can get rid of it. So inside of here, all I'm going to have is 1 minus natural log of x and then x times negative 1 over x, that's just going to equal to 1. So I have uh, positive 1 times all of that, and this is equal to 0. So then um, 1 minus 1, well, those guys go away. So then all I have is natural log of x equals to 0, and the solution to that is x is equal to 1. Sign is going to look, the first half of it anyways, something like that. And it'll continue, of course. But um, And then cosine of 2x, this guy is going twice as fast. So um, it's going to start up here, and then it's going to go down, and then over here, and it's going to finish off right there. Okay, so from 0 to pi over 2, there's one intersection point, and it's right, uh, right there. So, okay, so now, so it's before pi over 4. So this is uh, relatively easy to uh, do because um, we would just test first the ones that we uh, know. Let's test um, pi over 6. Well, I know sine of pi over 6 is equal to uh, 1 half. Okay, and then cosine, let's see if that's the same, cosine of 2 pi over 6, well, that's equal to cosine of pi over 3, and cosine of pi over 3 is equal to also 1 half. And so that means that that's the that's the point. It's pi over 6. And that's the only one you can see clearly from the graph. OK, so if we're trying to find the domain of this function, um, we know that since this is the natural log, we know that this guy right here has to be uh, greater than 0. So then we want to know, OK, when, does x, when is x to the fourth plus 27? greater than 0? Well, the answer to that is uh, it's always greater than 0. Because x to the fourth can't be negative. Add 27, well, um, it's always going to be uh, positive. So the domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity. OK, so when finding uh, the domain of this uh, function, 
um, we've got a couple of different things to um, take care of. First off, from this, I already know that x has to be greater than 0. But notice that there are two natural logs here. So I already know that x has to be greater than 0 because otherwise this guy right here wouldn't be defined. Okay, so I'm just going to leave that aside for now. But then also, this whole inside right here also has to be greater than 0. So 1 minus natural log of x has to be uh, greater than 0. So if I um, switch this around, this would mean that natural log of x has to be less than positive 1. Okay. Now, um, you can either use the definition of logarithm or uh, raise both sides to the, so have e raised to both of these guys. And so that would tell you that x would have to be less than e. OK, so if you put those two the, together, that x has to be less than e and x has to be uh, greater than 0, then what this means is that the domain goes from 0, not including 0, all the way up to e, and uh, that's it. It can't be any greater than e. And notice this makes sense because if you look at this, um, if you plug in a number that's bigger than e, so like let's say e squared, for example, you would get 1 minus, this guy would equal to 2, so this would be negative, and so natural log of a negative number wouldn't exist. So um, natural log of e by itself is equal to 1, um, which would make this 0. So that's the, that's the limit, but it doesn't include e. That's why we have the parentheses. And that's it. Um, okay, so this is really important because we're going to be doing this throughout. Um, we want to make sure we know how to write uh, absolute value functions as piecewise functions. So the way to do this is you're going to break this guy up into um, two different functions. Now, um, you're going to have break it up into two parts. Now, um, the first part is where this guy, x minus 2, is positive. And if x minus 2 is positive, then absolute value of x minus 2 is going to equal to x minus 2. Now, the other part is when it's negative. And if x minus 2 is negative, if this guy right here is negative, then the absolute value of x minus 2 is going to equal to negative x minus 2. The idea being that if this inside is negative right here, you multiply it by the negative and that makes it positive, thereby matching the original one. Now, the question is when to use each one. Well, you're going to use this one, like we just said, when x minus 2 is positive. So when it's greater than 0, so in other words, when x is greater than 2. And then it's negative, well, just exactly opposite. So you don't really have to do this, but I'll just do it this time. Um, it's going to be when x minus 2 is less than 0. So that means when x is less than 2. So when x is less than 2. So now if we graph this guy, we have uh, x minus 2, which is just a line with a y-intercept of negative 2 and a slope of uh, 1. So go up 1 over 1. Now this is valid when x is greater than 2. So this is 1, 2. So It's this line, but it's not valid right here, only after 2. So from when x is greater than 2, this is the line. And then the next one, we use negative x minus 2. Instead of negative x minus 2, let's distribute the negative sign and write this as negative x plus 2. 
So this guy has a y-intercept of positive 2, and the slope is uh, negative 1, so it would go down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1. And so it looks like this line, but it's only valid for x less than 2. So it's not valid over here, only for x values less than 2. So then when you put them together, you get this uh, absolute value function.